All right, we're going to get started. It's so fun to just have so many things to be thankful for, especially this, the people that we get to connect with and be with today. So good morning. Good morning online. We're so grateful that you've joined us this morning post Thanksgiving. And um, we're going to learn a new song. Stephen is going to lead us. We're super grateful to have Stephen with us this morning. So yay. <laughs> um, I'm excited about that. So this is called Love Everything. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for who you are, and we thank you for what you have done and what you're going to do. Our hearts are full of thanksgiving for all that you are and all that you have for each one of us. And Lord, we pray blessing on each person that's here, each person within the sound of my voice. Lord, including online. We love you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. That's us. We have the, the breath of God inside of us. If we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. So let's get busy praising him. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord. Sing to you a new song. Here we go. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with all of my heart, with all of my heart, with all of my strength, with all that I have. And I will sing with everything that has breath. Praise. There is a river that flows. There is a river that flows unrestrained from your heart. Canyons of mercy so deep I could never depart. Father, your wonders. Father, your wonders are endless. Open my eyes to believe. Wake my soul. Sing, let everything, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. With all of my heart, with all of my strength, with all that. Your faithfulness shines like the sun. And heaven's on fire, alive with the brilliance of love. Sing, Father, Father, your wonders are endless. Open my eyes to believe.
lips with thanksgiving on our lips we enter your courts today all our lives we freely give waking my soul to praise with thanksgiving Can we 
sing with thanksgiving one more time? With thanksgiving on our lips, we enter your courts today. Sing that again. With thanksgiving on our lips, we enter your courts today. Declare it one more time. With thanksgiving on our lips, we enter your courts today. All our lives. All our about revival on Sunday mornings and Jesus is the spirit of revival <laughs> so when we are asking the Lord for more revival we're asking the Lord for more of Jesus and I just feel like the Holy Spirit just reminded me this morning of there's a book called practicing the presence and it's about practicing the presence of God no matter where we're at if we're in the kitchen cutting carrots if we're on our way to work if we're just <laughs> having our morning coffee, if we're frustrated, we are invited to practice the presence of God in every place. And that's why that song was so important. With thanksgiving on our lips, we enter your courts with praise. Lord, we refuse to take your presence for granted. We refuse to come here on Sunday mornings and just do some religious ritual. We are here to practice the presence of the living God in a corporate way. And we invite you, Jesus, the spirit of revival to increase in each one of our lives. Lord, for people who came in with heavy stuff, I pray that you would break that off and that you would give us lips of thanksgiving whether we feel it or not. We thank you for breath, we thank you for life, and we thank you for provision whether we have seen it or we will see it.
about what you can do for us. It's about who you are. so that your mind is in a new place to engage with the Holy Spirit, then do it.
You're nothing less it's who you are. 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 For you.
Ready one more time. Born the king of angels. One more time. Born the king of angels. Oh, come let us adore. Oh, come let us adore. Oh, come let us adore. Let's sing. We come and we adore you. We come and we adore you. We come and we adore you. Christ. Goodness, God. 
I love your voice. You've led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in your goodness, oh God. And all my life you 
I just feel like there might be some people that are thinking, you know, I haven't seen God's goodness. I don't really know what you're singing about because that doesn't, doesn't always apply to me. And I just feel like the Holy Spirit just wants to remind us that sometimes we need to look for the places of the goodness of God. If we're not willing to acknowledge the Lord's presence, we won't see his goodness maybe. Yes. But he wants to show it to us even in the places of the past where we don't think that the, he was good. So, Father, I just ask right now that you would expose any places of lies or bleeding and you would speak your truth of your goodness to every place in our lives. Heal us, Lord, so we can see your goodness has been running after us our entire lives. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not all of his benefits. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Yes. Psalms 103. Boy, that's a good RX for getting up in the morning. That's a really good one. Lord, I pray a blessing and an open heaven over everyone's life and everyone's situation over their family and over their uh, their workplace and over their house and over their vehicle. Keep them safe. Keep them in the presence of the Most High God. And Father, I pray that you would touch us all in the place we need to be touched today. And I'm asking, Father, that you would come in in fresh anointing, and fresh touch of heaven. And I ask God that you would take control over everything that is said and done from this point forward. Lord, we thank you for what's already happened. But God, we're asking that there would be more. And Father, as we sit up to the table and we open your word, let our hearts be open to what you are saying, God. And let us be responsive with action and not only be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word as well. And we give you thanks for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated, and uh, kids, why don't you come on up here, and we're going to we're going to pray a prayer over you, and we're going to get started with something good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, more of the same. There we go. Is that Ryder? All right. Don't want any kids to get lost on their way to the altar. <laughs> ah, come on, let's just pray. Stretch your hands out towards these children. Father, we thank you for what's going on, and we praise you for every child that's here. I pray your blessing upon the workers, and I pray your blessing on the whole concept of what's going on. The revival of Children's Church in this place. And so, God, right now, we pray that today would be a great experience for them. Let them take it home and bless their families with it as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
So if you can give somebody an air high five near you, yeah. Joe, that's for you right there. Okay. <laughs> oh, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's, it's kind of follow the leader. Thanks. Good deal. Your goodness is running after me. Boy, I like that. One of these days, um, this water is going to be coffee, I think. When we first started, we had benches, and there was a cup holder right in the front where the, where the pastor could keep his cup of coffee. So we're just kind of looking for a little revival in that. I've got to get my notes here. I didn't come with that. Well, I'm glad to see everybody that's here today. This is, this is oh yeah, this is fantastic. And what I'm saying is, uh, there's a couple of times that, uh, you know, that the crowd is likely to be, you know, small or smaller. And one is whenever the time changes and we lose an hour. Actually, that's not the worst. But people get kind of prepared for that. It's when we gain an hour and they stay up extra late and know they have the extra time to sleep and then they sleep in. So, but, um, and the other one is, is uh, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. It's good to see you here. Good to see everybody here. Um, and welcome to the online campus. We're calling it not just the church online, but there's the online campus. And there's people up in the hills that can't get down. They're kind of housebound uh, for medical reasons. There's people all over the country, and including uh, Canada, that are watching this broadcast today. And I, I'm aware of all of that, and I'm saying, Lord, you're helping us. And we're, we're calling it not just... Uh, watching online, but the online campus, because really it's another, it's another outreach and an arm of the church, and we're grateful for the opportunity. Uh, I want to take a few minutes just to, to, to uh, do some personal announcements here, uh, and, um, and what I'm saying is uh, I want to give praise to the Lord, because I've got, uh, you know, the Lord has given me favor and a medical that Stanford will take and arrangements have finally been made for me to go back into Stanford to the, uh, the surgeon that actually did the original uh, surgery on my uh, lower descending aorta, uh, all of that. Um, and uh, we're going to fix the blood flow. Uh, they, they were kind of in a hurry uh, because my life was literally on the line. So they patched me up the best they could and they put... Uh, they put a stent in the aorta, but it blocked off the arterial blood flow to my left arm. And so I've had limited motion and swelling and so on and so forth. Uh, they were going to do it. The possibility was they would do it at the same time they did all the other surgeries. But after five surgeries, uh, the considered opinion of the medical professional and my family said, I think he's had enough. We're just going to stop it right there and uh, wait for a more, you know, uh, opportune time. So that is coming up. So I'm, I'm soliciting your prayers. Uh, I'm going in for the pre-op stuff. Uh, my surgeon, I've had some of those, like an echocardiogram and so on, fairly recently, and all came up clean and all of that. But uh, she is not uh, willing to take anyone else's word for it. She has to have her own stuff. That's the way she rolls, and I'm very grateful for it. She's a skilled and uh, knowledgeable person. And so uh, I'll go in for the pre-op stuff at, on Wednesday, and at 5 a.m. I check in on Thursday, and I should be there two to three days, hopefully two, and be home sometime on Saturday. So that's that. I'll probably miss the next Sunday. Pastor Stan is going to be in the pulpit, and I'm just telling you, yeah, it'd be okay to let him know that that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether I'll be here or not, maybe not, but I, you know, I think probably it'll take the, the next week and then I'll be here. But uh, I'm, I'm grateful to the Lord for the opportunity to get it done and for them to take my medical and for that surgery to be over with and it'll be in the rearview mirror by Christmas time, so that's good. The promise that I am working on is he who began a good work is able to complete it. 
I'm hanging on to that. Somebody quoted that to me the other day, and I, and I thought, well, all right then. You know, God's speaking to you along the same line concerning me. That's always fun. Uh, he's faithful. And so, I, you know, I want to just, I want to I wanna kind of set this thing up because what's happening is it's a lot of this is from my heart. It's a kind of a continuation on about the, the story of Gideon, but at the same time, I want it to apply to us right now because we're in a place where we've never been before. And uh, what I'm talking about is what we do for Jesus doesn't look exactly like it's always looked. Uh, the methods, even involving, you know, the outreaches that we've been able to have, it, you know, we're going to do something. Isn't this Christmas stuff looking great? I'm just telling you. It, she's not here, and a lot of the crew is not here, but if you are part of the crew, uh, Tanja's next door monitoring that service, but if you decorated yesterday, hold your hand up. We want to thank you. Come on, yeah, yeah, they're in the back. There was a good crew, and we had a lot of fun. We're not done, but we're going to do some more work over at the center as well so that when people drive, out in the, I just want to say the baby Jesus in the manger out there is, I think is nailed down, fastened down, because a couple of years ago, somebody, believe it or not, stole the baby Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I prayed for them, and, you know, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, but we... Yeah. <laughs> But I'm just saying, uh, you know, there's, there's things that are different right now. Many of our churches have, uh, across the nation, have not been able to meet at all in person. We are, you know, the price, I, I, you know, we're taking temperatures at the door. We're doing what we need to do, hand sanitizers. I'm wearing a mask in and out, and many of you are too. We're doing everything we can to ensure everyone's safety, but we're able to meet, and that's a big deal. That's a big deal. There's something about when we gather that's good. And so um, I, I, I'm thinking it's, it's different, it's different, and I'm asking God to give us the new methodology. I don't want us to get hung up on what the old days look like. I don't want to debating about what, you know, masks or no masks, or I don't want to be debated, you know, and all of that. I'm saying let's shift our concern to the eternal destiny of those around us that don't know Jesus. That's the main thing. And so I'm, I'm saying, I, I think, you know, we have to understand how it's going to happen. And I believe that God, God's Word talks about the end time revival, the end gathering. And I'm not predicting the end of the world or anything like that because only the Father knows, not even Jesus knows when that trumpet's going to sound. But I just hear that maybe some trumpets may be warming up in the wings. <laughs> I'm not so sure that, you know, I mean... I'm not saying this is the end of the world, but I'm not saying that we don't see the evidence of a movement toward that, that uh, conclusion. So what I'm saying is we need to live and plan like he's never coming. And we need, by, but sorry, we need to plan like he's never coming. And we need to live like he'll be here before the end of the day. Because we really don't know when he's coming. And what we're going to do, we need to do. And so I'm saying, Lord, show us how. And I think it's connected in a couple of things to, to some, some ideas. One is, it's the presence of God. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's the Word of God that's sharper than two-edged sword. When you share the Word of God, uh, you know, he said it, it will not return void to him. So when you're giving, you know, you're sharing your testimony or you're declaring the Word of God in a particular situation, it's going to come back. It's going to have, uh, you know, the desired effect, the, the, the effect that he desires. And I, I, but I want to say, you know, we need to discover new ways to get the job done. It's going to be different. Uh, and God wants us all to do his work. I, th I think the big shift that I'm thinking about is before we look to, and I, uh, you know, I, maybe I have taken more on than I should have, and that sort of thing from time to time in the past, but it seems like, uh, we have had, you know, we've had staff and pastors and we kind of leaned on them for, you know, to lead the charge. But now I think it's, it's everybody involved. God wants to use you. I want you to leave this place today knowing and understand. Understand that God has equipped and called you to do the work of the ministry. 
And so, I, you know, I, how many would, if they were honest with themselves and with me today, that they would say, I really would like to partner with God to, to see the great things that we see in the Bible, to see the miraculous, to see the healings, to see, you know, the people coming uh, to Christ. In, you know, in, uh, anybody want to partner with God to see that happening in your neighborhood? How about in your home and in your family? Boy, I've got some just pagans in my family. Wow. I didn't know how pagan they are until I checked their Facebook page. <laughs> Yikes. So I got some work to do. But I, yeah, so, so I, and I, I want you to know that partnering with God is a good deal because he does the heavy lifting. He takes the heavy end of the, of the burden and he gives us the ability to do what we need to do. And so I want you to count yourself in to all of those things that God wants to do. You're part of it. You're part of it. And so um, two weeks ago, I brought a message based on the account uh, in, of, of a farmer that God called named Gideon uh, to deliver his people Israel. Uh, do we have any farmers here? Anybody? Anybody grew up on a farm? Anybody heard of a farm? <laughs> Past the farm? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Used to be, you know, anyway. Um, I, I certainly did. But I'm just thinking, you know, uh, you know, when we look at Gideon, uh, he was an unlikely choice from the outside looking in. And I, I, I just want to say, too, that many of us, they, you don't think of yourself as somebody like Gideon. I mean, he was so surprised when the angel of the Lord came and said, Gideon, you man, you mighty man of valor, you know, uh, the Lord is with you. And he said, who, me? You know? If that's true, what in the world am I doing in this hole hiding from the enemy? What am I doing here? And if you're with us, God, why is all this stuff happening? And so I want to tell you, you are mighty men and women of valor whose hearts God can touch and make you effective at reaching your world. And the second thing is the Lord is with you. His Holy Spirit is there to give you strength and guidance. So I, I would like for us to, uh, we're going to read a little bit of uh, Gideon's victory here. Our text is found in Judges uh, chapter 7, verses uh, 16 to 21. And would you join me in standing um, to honor the reading of God's word? Oh, I've got to get this chair. It's get me stuck here. There. Let's read it out loud and together. He divided the 300 men into three groups and gave each man a ram's horn and a clay with a, tor with a torch in it. And then he said to them, keep your eyes on me, and when I come to the edge of the camp, do just as I do. As soon as I and those with me blow the ram's horn, blow your horns too. All around the entire camp and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. It was just after midnight, after the changing of the guard, when Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the Midianite camp. Suddenly they blew the ram's horns and broke their clay jars. Then all three groups blew their horns and broke their jars. Wow. They held the blazing torches in their left hands and the horns in their right. <laughs> and they all shouted, A sword for the Lord and Gideon. Each man stood at his position around the camp and watched as the Midianites rushed around in a panic, shouting as they ran to escape. Wow. Learn okay, so the first thing is, you may be seated. Lord, open our, our minds and our hearts to what you have to say in Jesus' name. Amen. So we need to move in this time in the supernatural realm. God wants us to learn to grow up and to be uh, you know what he wants us to do is do the same things that he did that's how we're going to get this job done in order to do that you have to recognize that there is a difference between the natural and the supernatural the best way I've ever heard it described to me and I'm going to describe it to you again the same way is this uh, you know on uh, on your stereo if you're still listening to tunes and not to Spotify and whatever, but you have an AM band and you have an FM band. 
for the purposes of illustration, I'm going to call the, uh, the, the AM band what is able to be perceived by your natural senses. And the FM band as the supernatural. And so when we, when we start to learn about the supernatural, we, we learn that there's two entities. There's the natural, and then there's another reality as well out there, and it's the supernatural. It's the realm that God wants us to learn to operate in, where we're not limited by what we can see, smell, touch, hear, and so on, where we are not bound and limited by what we can figure out with our finite intelligence. And with our experience, God wants to blow the limits away from what we can do with his help. And he wants us to start that today. So we, we need to understand that we are not alone when you're working for God in your family's situation and in your neighborhood and in your school and in the place where you're sending your grandkids or kids. I mean, you're not by yourself. And so what I'm saying is this. God wants us to understand what we need to do in the supernatural. Is anybody with me? Want to know to how, how to work with that? I, you know, I think that's going to be something that we're going to spend time with on Wednesday nights too in conjunction with prayer. We've been doing that. And God wants us to know because he wants us to, to be armed according to uh, Ephesians 6. And, and then, uh, you know, we need to go forth in the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit and God's might. And so... Uh, God uh, wants us to know, first of all, that he works in the realm of the supernatural. And our text today is, is uh, an illustration of the supernatural. You see, uh, Gideon, uh, I mean, uh, you've got to understand, first of all, that Gideon was, uh, you know, he had 300 men against about 200,000 of the ites. There were the Midianites, and then there was all the people that were with him. All the ites, the parasites, you know, termites. I don't know what they were. <laughs> but they, yeah, parasites, yeah, I love them. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. They were preying on the Israelites. That's what it is. But, uh, but God decided that enough was enough. The people cried out to God, and God sent a deliverer, and he sent a man named Gideon. And he sent him, uh, you know, he was an unlikely guy. He was called in an unlikely way, and you can read it for yourself. He was so stupefied and so doubting, really. He said, God, is that you? Is that you? I'm hearing this, but I'm not believing it because I don't think of myself in that way. And somebody here, and maybe somebody in the online campus, needs to understand that God sees you differently than you see yourself. God sees you differently than your parents may have seen you or your boss may have seen you or somebody else. You can fill in the blanks. And they told you something about yourself. And sometimes you're still believing the lie that the enemy planted in your mind in that experience. Then God wants to say, you are bigger than that. You are more than that. You are able with God's help to do exceedingly above and beyond what you could ask or think. Don't limit God by who you think you are. Hmm. I mean, I'm just saying, who do we think we are? That's a good question. You know, when we understand that we're the righteousness of God in Christ, we understand that we're saved, healed. We are the head and not the tail. We are blessed and cannot be cursed. We are the ones that are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You know, we will be with him forever in eternity. We are the overcomers. Uh, you know, you can go on the list because we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And, uh, you know, and I'm just saying, wow, that, I mean, that's, that kind of blows me away. I didn't get it. I didn't understand, and we, we need to unpack that. The family privileges that go along with being part of God's family, because there's many of them. And so he wants us to know how God works. And I will say that, you know, uh, we, we want to learn about the supernatural and we want to understand that God wants to give us specific instructions in this season of our life like he's never talked to us before. If we will pray and ask God, if we will consistently have our devotions, and Tom, I don't know if it's back there. Do we have a green journal at the back yet or not? Just tell me yes or no. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm going to ask somebody to bring me that in when I call for it. When I call for it, it doesn't have to come now. I just want you to know about it. So uh, God, you know, doesn't always do things the way they've, done, they've been done before. 
and previous days. And I'm saying it's a new day. God is doing something different than we have ever seen before in our lives. But uh, he wants, you know, uh, he, he knows that, that some are here today and you're saying, what's next? Some are watching in the online, uh, online campus and they're saying, mm, uh, you know, I need some hope today. I need some hope because what I see ahead of me does not look good. It doesn't look like the change I'm looking for. You're looking, you're actually longing in some ways to get back to normal. But normal is like Egypt. We need to go forward to the new normal that God wants to give us, which is better than what we left. God doesn't take through us through this stuff for no reason. He takes us through this stuff so that he can prepare us for what he wants us to do. And so we're getting squeezed now because the diamond shaping process is beginning in some lives that have never been pressed hard before. Some of you have had a, an easy time of life. Everything you've touched has turned to gold. And you've never been, you know, in a place where you've had to, uh, to really bear down and figure out what to do and it looks impossible and so on. Many of you are experiencing those kinds of things right now. And so I, uh, I want to encourage you today. God doesn't do the things, you know, the same way all the time. God wants to do something new in your heart. He wants to do something new in this church. He wants to do something new in this community. He wants to revive our nation. There's people out there that are, that are crying gloom and doom, and it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. It's going to be worse. I heard somebody say, and I won't say who it was, that says, well, I guess we're just not going to be able to have Christmas this year. Wow. That's the devil. <laughs> That's a lie from the pit. Look around. It looks like Christmas in here has come. I'm right. And so he wants us to learn how to move in the supernatural, to partner with him, to do what we cannot do in our own strength. And we need to learn how to recognize his presence and how he works among us. He's here today to do the miraculous. And I'm going to ask your help for, for prayer. And it's, it's the guy and his, and I won't name it because we're on the air and so on, but he, he was the one that dumped his motorcycle out here in this intersection. I need to have another conversation with him about his eternal destiny. I want him to come back. He came back once. We prayed, and he showed up outside the, the center, you know, walking in a walker. I, I, you know, we thought he was going to be dead. I, you know, it was just like that. And so I want, I want him to come back. I want you to pray for the miraculous. See, I, I, I think that that was a God appointment for him and for me. And I want a follow-up appointment. So I'm going to get it. I, I don't know where he lives. I'm not going to stalk him. I'm going to say, Lord, bring him back. You can say those things. You can say, Lord, give me another opportunity to speak to my neighbor or my, you know, my relative that I, that I am going to see or I'm going to Zoom or I'm, you know, whatever it is at Christmas time, the one that's hard, hard to get along with and hard to, word, to get the gospel uh, you know, even as a topic of, of discussion. Is there anybody but me that has, uh, you know, relatives like that? Anybody? Yeah. They just say, I don't want to hear it. Don't talk to me about Jesus. Actually, don't let that stop you. <laughs> you know, if they're going to be, you know, that way, you know, the Holy Spirit has a way. You don't have to be forceful to the point that you make them angry, but just say, well, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit or God talks to me. I just thought that maybe this might be a different time than it has been in the past. I'm still praying for you because I want you to go to heaven. Hmm. Tuning in to the FM band, what do we do? Um, we spend the time in the, uh, the word and in prayer. Yeah, can you bring me that journal uh, from the back there? Thanks. Um, we are doing uh, 30 minutes for 30 days, and we, you know, the 30 days are, thank you, how it looks to you. Uh, this has been... This has been absolutely the best thing that I've ever found to keep uh, to journal what we're doing and to keep uh, a record of your Bible reading. The problem with most of us is, uh, and I, 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 so I'm going to ask this, is there anybody in the room that's 100% consistent in your devotional life? Is there anybody that has not missed a day in the past year? Is there anybody here that's not missed a day in the past three months? 
Okay, I'm not going to go <laughs> any farther because, yeah, okay, there's, I got one. That's good. I am thinking this, the Bible reading plan is there and you will get through the New Testament twice and the Old Testament once every year. And the journaling part is so important because here's how it works. It's the soap method. What in your reading, and as you're reading, it's the, it, you're, you're, get, you're getting the, the full gospel. You're getting the full measure of God's truth. Uh, and when you, you jump around and do other things, I'm just going to tell it the way I feel it, and uh, it, you'll have to excuse me if this does not suit your, uh, your, your preference. But there's some really good, you know, my you know, daily bread and my utmost for his highest. There's some really great devotionals out there, and that's okay. But if that is, that is where you're at, it's, it's like, okay, cool, I'm going to, if I offend you, I, I mean to actually, because uh, I want to provoke you to action. It's like pre-digested baby food. Somebody else's word from God, and you're going there. The Holy Spirit wants to bring you something straight from the word. I don't know about you, but I, I didn't get somebody to go and ask Tanja to marry me. I went in person. God wants to come in person and talk to you about your life. And so what this does is it gives you the word, and as you go through it, uh, you know, God will, will bring something to mind. He'll highlight a scripture or a passage uh, or a thought, and then, then you write that down. And I'm thinking writing instead of typing. I'm, I'm typing right now until I get my arm back. I have to have one arm to hold the thing, you know, you know whatever. I like to write with a fountain pen. I really do. So, <laughs> But, it, you know, you write that down, and then that's the, the scripture, S for soap. And then the O for observation is what does it say? And there's many, many times where something has caught my attention and I've written it down. And in the, applic in, in the, 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 the observation, what does it say? God speaks to my heart. And there is a nugget of truth. How many understand that God wants you to seek him first uh, when he says, uh, you, know, uh, you know, this is how you pray. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. This is bread. This is bread. Spiritual food. Daily bread. How many understand that you can get a nugget of truth every day that suits your situation? A word from God that helps you to, to, to move through your day and be successful at it. How many understand that? You'll get it when you read your Bible, and this is a tool. It, it, it happens this way. I'm writing it down, and the Lord is talking to me, and he's giving me wisdom and insight as I go through the process. I didn't start with it all fully formed, but in the process of writing it down, and then we get to A, to application, how will my life change today as a result of what I've just read? And God, I start to write, and something begins to happen. And there's a lot of times where, and then P is for prayer. Pray over that and declare it over my life and declare it over my situation, the promise of God or whatever. But it's many, many times that what I am studying with the date is absolutely effective in meeting the needs of the day. It's like God, you know, he just organized the whole thing and it makes sense for me at that time. So I recommend these. These are at the back. They're like eight bucks. And, well, yeah, or a donation. That's good. And, you know, whatever you want to do. But I would like as many as will come with us through this season. I'm, I'm asking the staff and the leadership team to come with me too because we're, we're reading the Bible together and we will be able to interact with each other on the truths that God has given us. It's a good deal. It's a real good deal. So... That's one of the ways. You know, if we want to learn uh, who God is, we have, to, we have to digest and spend time in his word. And we have to get to know his voice. He talks to us when we read his word, when we write it down and that sort of thing. It says in Joshua, meditate on the word day and night, then you'll have good success. If you want to have good success, invest some time in the disciplines of reading the word and praying and praying and praising 
you know, worshiping the Lord. You, 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 your day will change. The effectiveness, effectiveness of your life will change when you put God first. He says, if you put me first, then I'll take care of all the rest. And so if we're going to go where God wants us to go, these are fundamental things. How are we going to get there? We're going to get there by being a spirit-filled, spirit-led, spirit-empowered people that move not in our own strength and in our own thinking, but we move guided by the Holy Spirit. That's why I like it, Carrie, when you say, I think the Holy Spirit wants you, know, you to say what, what she is really saying, and I'm going to encourage her in this, what the Holy Spirit is saying. Yeah, what the Holy Spirit is saying. You know, we're, we're, we're going to learn. I, I'm, I'm praying for the prophetic to emerge and, and, and you know, keep on coming. Uh, you know, we, we have a, a worship team that is prophetic. You, are you, do you understand that? Nelson is prophetic. Carrie is prophetic. There's some others that I won't embarrass by telling you that they're Tara. <laughs> yeah. They're prophetic, and there's others that uh, that are learning that, that that this is what God this this is what God wants to do. We're gonna ha- we've got uh, two more board members that have just been appointed to fill the the gap where uh, Dan Howard and and John Wang have moved out of state, and uh, they're at the back. One's on the soundboard. His name is Rob Jenkins, and the other is yeah. And the other is, is my good friend and one of the founding members of New Song. It's Mike Santins. And he is stepping into some stuff. Now, what will happen is they have an appointment. We'll have our, our business meeting. And it's been a kind of a crazy year. We'll have our business meeting in, in uh, February. And they will be up for re-election because they're appointed. And then we're going to elect some new board members too. Some are coming off. Some need to come on. But I just wanted to mention that. And they are going to be part of the team that's going through this. We are really serious about what God wants to do. We don't want to play church. We don't want to just gather for the sake of coffee. Oh, that is a powerful, <laughs> compelling argument for some of us. But I, I just, uh, I'm just saying that's not the reason. It's so that we can be encouraged and we can be taught and we can be prayed for, and we can have the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to take the, the church outside of those four walls and make a difference wherever God puts us, you know, places us and give us the, gives us the opportunity. So here's what happened when we learn. Uh, you know, there is a process, but God will give us, number four, victory in, uh, in this season. We are not going away. This church is not blowing, you know, drying up and blowing away. Because we can't meet, because, you know, it's not that. The fact is, there's something that's going on in the Spirit that I'm excited, I'm super excited about. I'm excited about getting this arm to work right. I can't have a, you know, I mean, I just can't, can't play my horn, can't do, you know, the things that I would normally do. And uh, God has given me back the use of this appendage. And, you, you know, like the old song says, you don't know what you got until it's gone, <laughs> you know. But anyway, uh, you know, there is something that's going on. There is something that's brewing in the spirit. And I want you to be understanding that it's for everybody. It's not just for some that have a title or some that seem to be holier or, or more, you know, spiritually mature. And that. Everybody has a spot. Everybody has an opportunity. But we have to go through the process by which we are prepared for our destiny. God wants something more for you than you want for yourself. He's able to do above and beyond what you could ask or imagine. So we're at letter B here, uh, learning total dependence on God. So Gideon's army, um, he, was, uh, he was sadly outnumbered. He started with about 32,000. He ended up with 300. You can read it for yourself in, Gen- in, in uh, Judges chapter 7, how that went. And they were getting, going up against all the ites, about 200,000 men, and their war camels and all their, you know, you, they were well-armed, well-trained, and they outnumbered the Israelites uh, by an immense amount. But it wasn't about the numbers. Uh, their strength, number one, on your notes now, letter B, number one, their strength was not in numbers, but it was in the hand of the Lord. 
Uh, God gave, gave Gideon a battle plan. So as far as I know, I, I can't think, maybe Pastor Stan, you can think, did anybody use torches and trumpets in the warfare? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What's that? Oh, the trumpets. Maybe the trump, trumpets and torches. Uh, but I'm just thinking this was a unique battle plan. It was, it was get rid of everybody but 300 to go against 200,000. The Bible says that the, 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 the armies that came against them were almost like the sands of the seashore and too numerous to count. Somebody else, one of the other com commentators said about 196,000. So I round it up because it sounds better at 200,000. So... <laughs> But they, get, they got 300 people. And, and Gideon, when you read the account, he still wasn't convinced. He'd put out the fleeces and he'd say, okay, God, I got it that you told me, but I just want to know, uh, you know, are we going to be successful? Because there's 300, like, look around, 300. I counted this up. We're 300, and there's a bunch of them. We can't even count them. There's so many. This, I just want to make sure that... I, that that I've got this right. So the Lord arranged for him to go down into the camp and he arrived at just the time when a couple of the Midianite army were talking and they were talking about a dream they had. And, a, you know, a sheaf of barley came down and, you know, busted in. You can read about it. And he said, I wonder what that dream means. And he says, well, that's about Gideon. And they said, the Lord has given all the, all the army of the Midianites into the hands of Gideon. Gideon heard that, and he worshiped God, and he said, all right, God, I got it. You're talking to me now. I, I understand it. If these pagan people can have a dream inspired by the God of the earth that they don't know anything about, we think. So, so, so here's the deal. And he, he, he needs to give us a fresh battle plan. God needs us to give us a fresh battle plan because the way it worked before does not work right now. And so uh, anything we've, we've done before, wow. We've just got to seek God and be open then to what he's going to say because it's probably going to look different than what we've seen before. So here's what they said. You know, he, he, he didn't give them a battle plan. There were certain elements of, of good strategy. First of all, they, they dispersed the army and they went into points and they surrounded the Midianites. And it was just about midnight where they changed the guard and uh, the people that were coming on and coming off, they were milling around in their tents. There was a certain, uh, you know, amount of confusion. And suddenly, in the middle of all of that, there are three companies, and they broke the clay pots that the torches were in, held the torches in their left hand, and they blew their trumpets. And, you know, I don't know if they were great trumpet players, but anybody been in, a, um, a, you know, a, a beginning band room? When people who didn't know how to play. Okay, so my, yeah, so what I'm thinking about right now is that H.D. Stafford, junior high, 8 through 10, I'm, I'm thinking that, uh, you know, God has blessed me. And, uh, you know, when other teachers were, you know, bands were very small, our beginning band uh, was 86 people. There was no TAs. I was by myself in that classroom Nobody knew how to play. So I was teaching them, and the sounds that came out of the, uh, out of the ends of those horns, I mean, the worst was the bassoon player. You know, it sounded like a tired piece of sandpaper calling to a barred bar fence. I don't know what it was. It's terrible. And I was thinking, so some of these were trained trumpet players, and others were sounding like crows with a sore throat. And it was terrifying. The noise was like, what is that? I mean, I, I, I have no idea because I wasn't there. But the, all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, they're grabbing the sleep from their eyes. Some are getting up. Some are going to sleep. They're tired. And in the middle of that, all of a sudden, you hear this incredible sound. Trumpets are loud, by the way. And when you have 12 trumpets that can't play, they try and make up for it by volume. I'm telling you. <laughs> And so it was quite a time until we got them to, you know, to settle down and learn how to play. But that's what happened. And then the sudden light. I mean, if you come from pitch dark to sudden light for a moment, your eyes can't, you know, that they need time to adjust. And then they, they started to shout. The, the battle cry was 
a sword for the Lord, you know, for the Lord and for Gideon. And I guess they were, you know, they were loud with the trumpets and they were loud with their voice. And then they stood back on the perimeter and watched what God did to the enemy. And what happened is they became confused and they started fighting amongst themselves. They started killing each other and they, they, they were seized by a panic sent from the Lord and they hightailed it out of there as fast as they could. They ran away from 300 men because God himself was present. And I'm, I'm telling you this. Somebody needs to hear the odds that you face or the things that you think are impossible. God wants to let you know that moving into the realm of the supernatural means the great equalizer. You know, somebody said about the Old West, God made all men equal, but Samuel Colt, <laughs> you know, God made all men, but Samuel Colt, you know, the, the six-shooter, uh, made men equal. God begins to fight on your behalf. Everything changes. Everything changes. You can, you can chase, you can do anything that God, you can, you can jump in and expect to swim any place God intends for you to be. I, I want you to understand that you, you have to stop thinking that you're poor and little, that you can't do anything. God wants you to understand who you are today. With his help, you can do anything. God is going to talk to some of you and give you, give you a word today and maybe in, the, in the, the days too about what your purpose is and what he wants you to do. And you're going to say, that doesn't look like something that I am down for. I, that's not my wheelhouse. I've never done anything like that before. I don't know what I'm doing and I can't do it. And God wants you to know you can do it. Because he's going to give you a battle plan and he's going to give you the power and he's going to step up and fight on you. When it was all over, there was no Midianites left. All there was is spoils. And they ran. You can read it for yourself. The ones that they left behind because they were fearful and because they were, you know, lapped at the wrong, you know, the wrong uh, way at the, at, the, uh, at the river. They joined them and they chased those Midianites right out of Israel. The, the word doesn't say they ever came back. <laughs> I reckon you get out of here and do you ever come back? Something like that going on. That's old West stuff. Anyway, <laughs> the word of the Lord. Yeah. So God has a plan for adversity in our lives, and uh, you know here it is. And I got to hurry. Second Corinthians twelve nine and ten says, each time he said, and this is Paul. And that's just the word of the Lord to Paul. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. Paul was talking about a thorn in his flesh, and he prayed that, that that would be taken away. But he says, my grace is all you need. This is God saying, don't ask me to take it away because there's a purpose. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So God's, the first thing we got to know is God's strength is made known best when we're weak. Uh, when we are at our weakest point, God's strength is released on our behalf in the most powerful of manifestations. And to the extent we rely on our own strength, God's power is diminished. Because, you know, we have a choice. We can either do it in our own strength and carry any time you want to help me, that'd be good. We can't have it both ways. We can't be walking in the strength and the power and the plan of God and having our own stuff. Yeah, thanks. Carrie got a deeper voice, but that's good. I knew that. I just forgot about it. Sorry. Adversity uh, will come into every life. How many understand that? It will come. And if it hasn't come powerfully yet, it's coming. But we can't have God's strength and, and our strength. That's what was going on with Gideon. God was saying, I want you to know, I, wa I, I want you to learn this, Gideon, because there's more I have in mind for you. I want you to understand that my strength is made perfect when you are weak. I want you to understand that it's not all about you, it's all about me. I want you to understand that it is not your strength, your talent, your good looks 
or your ability to thresh in a hole hiding from the enemy. It's not about your pedigree. It's not about your experience. It's not about your degrees. It's not about your family. It's not about your bank account. It's not about the neighborhood you live in. It's about the God that you serve. We can't have it both ways. We either learn to depend on God or we depend on ourselves. And so I'm saying, oh God, help us to learn to depend on you. Adversity comes to prepare us to be able to handle a greater measure of pressure. When we face all kinds of persecutions and difficulties, then we rejoice instead of get mad and get grumpy because God is preparing us for our future. Romans 5, 3 says we can rejoice too when we run into problems, NLT, and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. You see, number three, preparation is necessary for promotion. It's like preparing to run a marathon. I'll pick on, if Jeff and I went to run a marathon, uh, we'd have to work up to it. I, don't, I haven't seen any marathon runners with a cane, but I'm going to throw that so far I'll never see it again pretty soon. Jeremiah said it this way in terms of promotion and the preparation. Adversity comes to equip us for what God wants for our future. Jeremiah 12, 5 said, If racing against mere men makes you tired, how will you race against horses? If you stumble and fall on open ground, how will you do in the thickets near the Jordan? In other words, the adversity, you know, or if we can't take the small stuff of the present, how will we ever have the capacity to endure and cope with the big stuff? We need to win at this level. It's like a video game. You win at this level and then you go to the next one. Unless somebody pulls the plug on your device and the batteries run out or whatever. But we rejoice when life gets difficult because those are the experiences that put steel in our in our spine they give us the opportunity to get strong so that we can run one of the other transmissions says if you can't if you can't win against the footman how are you going to ever survive against the horses you got to win where you're at you got to overcome where you're at because the pressure at this level, if you think that's too much, the pressure that comes when you're promoted to this level is going to increase. It's like a lot of pastors are saying, you know, a lot, oh God, you know, grow the church. And what they're leaving out is when the church grows the way it's supposed to grow, so will the pressure increase on the leadership. You understand that? And so if you can't, and, and if you get promoted at work or you're getting promoted in the kingdom of God, if you can't handle what you got going now, then you'll never handle what God wants to promote you into. So you gotta understand. So the longer and more intense the difficulties we face, the greater the level of responsibility that God is preparing us for. You think about Moses. He was in the desert for 40 years because he was gonna do the job of a lifetime. He needed to prepare to take up to three million people through the desert for 40 years. It's a big deal. So if you're in an intense place, don't whine and complain, but rejoice. Because God is trusting you with the, the things that go to preparation for the next level that he wants you to function in. He is making you able. See, some of the pressure that I'm under right now I couldn't have taken a few years ago. I didn't know how to do it. Some of the pressures that you're facing now, you couldn't have done a few years or for a few months ago even. But it's, it's something that you're going to face when God puts you in the place that is your destiny. And so we say, Father, thanks for trusting me with this. In the academic world, if you want to teach at the doctoral level, there's a lot of classroom time and a lot of testing and a lot of papers and a dissertation to write and defend it and all that. There's a process. You don't get there without the process. You're not going to get to where God's destiny and, you know, unless you go through the process, you know what I'm telling you. 
So don't whine and complain when you're in the middle of the process. Trust the process. You're going to be fine because you're going to discover the God who brings you into the process is able to bring you out on the other side. Strong and able and knowing your God in a way that you could never have understood when things were easy. God is preparing us for a new day at, at New Song. It's not necessarily going to look like anything we've done before. But it will, I assure you, it will be based on the unchanging Word of God. That never changes. God doesn't change. The methods we use to reach people changes. And so, how do we prepare for a move of God? Would you get out, if you've not got it before, would you get out your, um, your bulletin and your notes right now? And I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things. First of all, first of all, we need to keep on praying for 30, you know, 30 for 30. We need to consistently have daily devotions, and that's, that's the journal. I encourage you to get it. There's more. I've got, I've got more, and we can get more. I've got more in my office. And I'm, I'm asking everybody who will to join us with the Life Journal. It's going to make a difference in your life that you would not believe when you get consistent in the Word. Because good intentions are not the same as, as you know, planning and, and, and following through with the plan. When we read the Bible together as a church, it'll help us with unity, being of one heart, one mind. Then I'm going to ask you to write down here, I don't need to see it, but I want you to see it, five people that need to come to Christ. And then I'm asking you for five places that you need a miracle in your life. I want you to write it down. I want you to maybe date it because when God answers those prayers, you're going to rejoice. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, for the online campus, wherever you are to reverence this moment, I'm going to ask you to search your heart, open your heart to what God, the Holy Spirit, may be speaking to you. And I'm going to ask you if there's anyone here in the building or on the online campus and you're not right with God I want you to just raise your hand I can't see it if it's online I can see if it's in the building but God sees it and if you're not right with God you want uh, to make it right just lift up your hand I'm, I'm looking and I'm waiting for people online and God is, is working in your heart I want us to pray this out loud. And wherever you are, pray it out loud too. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day and the opportunity to pray. I ask you to forgive me of the things that I've done that have been wrong. The things that I knew were wrong and did them anyway. The things I knew I should do and left undone. Father, your word says that your blood washes my heart white as snow. I ask you for that cleansing and that forgiveness. Lord, your word also said that if I would believe in my heart and declare with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, you are the, you are the Son of God, we would be saved. So I declare today that I am saved and I'm delivered from my past. I renounce the enemy and all his works and ask for your strength to live victoriously for you for the rest of my days. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Now I'm going to ask for a couple other things. And I, I you know, I can't ask for for notes to come in and all of that, but I'm just asking for hands to go up. Are you ready for the process? Are you ready for the process of getting ready for the next level? If you are, I want you to stand to your feet. You say, God, do in my life whatever needs to be done. If you're able, stand. Just stand. If you're able. You're saying, I'm, I am ready to be counted. I'm ready to go through the process. I am ready to do whatever it takes, Lord, that you could find me usable for your kingdom. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you. 
I thank you. I'm gonna, I, why don't you just lift your hands right now? And I know I've gone a little longer, but I'm going to ask you to get right at the end of this prayer. Bring your, your offering and then stay for prayer. Lord, I pray for everyone that's standing and lifting their hands and everyone on the online campus. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name as we are responding to you today. I'm asking, Father, that you would raise up an army that would do damage to the kingdom of darkness and would carry the torch of your light to the places where it's dark. I pray, Father, that you would make of us warriors for the kingdom of God. You would make us absolutely overcomers. Give us intense moments, Lord. Give us dreams and visions about how you're going to use us. And Lord, empower us, Father, so that we can move and do what you've called us to do. And Father, give us fruit. Give us souls for the harvest. And Father, give us, Lord, this day our daily bread. Help us, Lord, to be consistent in our devotions and our prayer life. We pray it in Jesus' name. And we bless the offering. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We bless those online that are giving and sending it in. And, and uh, they're sending it, uh, you know, with credit card information, PayPal, whatever is on there. Lord, I just pray you can, and, and you can go online at our home, uh, right on our website. And if you're on church online, and you can hit the give button. It'll help you walk you through the process. If you're on there, we want to know for the online campus. We want to know who's out there. We want to know who you are. And if we can help you in any way, just go to chat, log in, and let us know or hit that prayer button. And if you're here, we want you to know how important I think you are. I covet your prayers this week. Not sure if I'll make it next week, but the best man for the moment is Pastor Stan, I'm telling you. He's here, he's taking notes, he's going to pick up whatever the whatever the Lord gives him is going to be right in keeping with where God is going here. So Lord, bless the offering of your people. Bless the tithes and bless the offerings. And bless the online giving right now, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would help us to meet all of our obligations. And Lord, I pray, Father, that you would give plenty for every home. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Could you come and just, uh, the baskets are on the sides. Thank you for your faithfulness. And some of you are going back to the to the iPad at the back. That's working. My pleasure. I'll be back. I'm able to raise both hands. <laughs> if you want prayer, just stay here. I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Stan and Julie to join me. Need some help? Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to dismiss everyone that's not here for prayer. And I want to say Happy Thanksgiving if it's, you know, we're looking backwards there. Merry Christmas if we're looking forward. <laughs> I'm looking forward to being back with you. Would you lift your hand for the blessing? We'll pray for anybody that wants prayers long. But Lord, I'm asking that you would give us incredible understanding and, and the ability to take, you know, the, the words that came from my frail lips today. And Lord, I pray that you would empower them to promote action and promote kingdom business to be conducted this week. Father, I thank you for it. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Lift up his countenance upon you. That means grant you access to his presence. And may he give you his peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Keep coming for prayer. We just ask the folks if you just... Yeah. we got some oil coming. Still trying to get my legs back here.